guys, tonight I'm going to be making a short video on my generator controller that I built. I mentioned in a previous video that I wanted to build my own one, and after a few months of designing, planning, and building it, I've finally got the finished product to show you. I'll probably end up making a few videos on this controller because there's uh, various functions that can perform. So if we look at the overview of the unit here, we've got volt, hertz, and amps for the grid, and also for the generator. Down at the status indicators, that uh, indicates that the power supply is available. Obviously, fault's pretty self-explanatory, and online is indicating which source the load output is using, so either the grid or the generator. Moving down to the, all the buttons, um, at the top here we have a weekly test. So this is the automated load test um, function. So what you do is you just push that, it automatically starts the generator, switches it over, does about a 30 minute load test and turns it back off. Um, tonight we're going to be doing a manual transfer because there's a bit more to it. Um, so for manual transfer you've got on and off for each source. So you've got on and off for mains and then that's the transfer button, on and off for generator and then that's the transfer button for that one. Something worth noting is none of these buttons are functional unless you've moved it over to um, manual mode off automatic. Down here we've got the auto button so that says that the generator is running in auto mode and it will automatically transfer over. We've got bypass which says that the generator is running but the contactor is bypassed so the load's back on the grid side. And finally we've got the indicator that just tells you that a load test is under operation. At the bottom here we've got the generator emergency stop. So if we push that, it goes off auto mode and locks out the generator um, so it won't start under any circumstance. This is a physical lockout to the controller, so when this is active, the controller is physically disconnected from the circuit. Okay. <clears throat> a quick look inside the cabinet. You can see the PLC that controls everything up there. We've got two contactors on the right hand side at the top. We've got a couple of relays and some uh, contact clips or whatever they're called. We've got the power supply for the battery charger on the generator. We've got the power supply for the PLC. We've got our fuses, so we've got the control circuitry fuse that controls this and that. We've got the generator fuse, which is the input from the generator, and we've got the mains fuse, which is the mains input. Uh, there's no output fuse for the load because that is over there there's uh, separate fuses for that one this down here is the main contactor that is acting as the automatic transfer switch it's physically mechanically interlocked so it's on each pole of the contactor so there's no way that the grid and the generator could possibly be energized at the same time down here this is our actual engine controller so that starts the engine chokes the in or not it's a diesel but it controls the fuel flow and the fuel pump and stuff like that and then we've just got a terminal block for the generator output. Okay, let's begin the load test. So starting off, we have to go into manual mode. So we'll switch this over to manual. We'll see that grid goes into fault because what will happen if you leave this on auto mode and the power goes out and comes back on, the grid will not automatically restore. So that fault's just indicating that something's not quite right with the, with the panel. Eventually, I want to add a buzzer to these fault indicators so you can hear that something's wrong. And I also want a battery charge indicator for the generator just to see what the battery's at um, on the generator. Okay, we're in manual mode. So our next step is to start the generator. And it should start any second. There we go. So, the generator started, but because we are on manual mode, it is not going to transfer the load. We have to physically say that we want to transfer the load over. If you look on the amp meter at the top here, you see we're drawing close to 5 amps. And when we do a transfer, you'll see that this online indicator goes over here, and you'll see the current is picked up by the generator. So now let's transfer the load. There we go. Now the room is running on the generator, uh, pretty much seamlessly. You didn't see any sort of flickering of the lights or anything. Uh, it's pretty impressive. Now all that load is on the generator. 
what we could now do it's not really any point in doing it but you could actually switch off the grid supply so now your grid's completely offline now that it's because this is a manual transfer this will just continue to run until the generator pretty much runs out of fuel um, whereas a weekly test automatically turns it off so my next video will be the weekly test function and then we'll do an actual power outage where I, sh I shut off the grid and start from start from a complete blackout okay now let's transfer back to the mains so first we have to turn the mains on mains is back on see out the top and we'll transfer it back over we are now running back on mains and you can see bypass is active again inside this cabinet that relay there that's in charge of bypassing this contactor so it does not allow that contactor to close when it's on bypass mode and you can hear the PLC clicking there okay we'll give the generator a little bit to cool down I don't like turning it on and off quite quickly I like to leave it for a little bit but um, I think it'll be all right we have to, didn't have load on it for very long so once we've finished our test we can stop the generator takes a while it has to do a quite a bit of processing so what it's doing the reason there's a delay is just checking the grid making sure the grid is stable before it switches over and then hopefully it should switch over There we go, the generator is now back offline. So what we can do now is just go back into auto mode. And now we're ready for another test or power failure, whatever happens first. I might actually just do a load test while we're at it, um, just to demonstrate. Again, I don't really like turning the generator on and off quickly, but I'm sure it'll be fine. So what I'll do now, we'll go back into manual and I will begin the load test. And we can go back into auto now. Okay, now that's gonna run for about 20 minutes and then reset the generator. I will resume this video when it is going to be switching back over. Thanks for watching.